the sins or the blessings of the father follows through many generations. Do you believe that? Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he's old, he will not depart from it. Do you think that's true? To what extent does family shape a child's future? You are watching Influence Media, PSI TV, the Netflix of biz brands. Well, my guest today is Teresa Sebastian, and she's a business executive, lawyer, and author of an award-winning historical fiction, Lost Seeds, The Beginning, seeking to help people understand how family history can impact future generations. And through a three-part family saga beginning in the early 1900s, the novel shows the family challenges and how future generations can overcome. Teresa has also been compelled to put words to this human life that she sees around her. And Lost Seeds, the beginning, is her first novel. Welcome, Teresa. Thank you so much, Trudy, and it's a pleasure to be here with you. Well, I did read your book, Teresa. It was an absolute page turner. And before we actually jump into questions about the book, you're a lawyer and a business yes. executive. Considering your own personal journey to what would by all intents be considered a successful outcome, what contribution would you acknowledge or discount from your parents to the quality of life you currently enjoy? Well, listen, I can only take the contributions. My parents taught us discipline. Uh, they instilled in us spirituality, meaning a belief in a higher power. Uh, they really taught us self-confidence. And that carried through the rest of my life. Those are the kind of the pillars of my life right now. Oh. Okay, so Lost Seeds, the beginning, looks at the life of a family, and it's at the tail end of the era of slavery that the story picks up, and the generation that immediately follows. And the story captures the historical aspects of slavery, the different in treatments of Blacks in the South versus the North, and so much more. Teresa, what was your research process like for capturing and maintaining what appears to be a strong historical integrity in this book? Uh, well, I did a lot of research from various sources. A lot of it, the nucleus of it, just came from family stories uh, that I heard from my grandparents, my parents, aunts, uncles. And so that really is the cornerstone of the research. But then also I did a lot of reading, historical reading, looking back at old newspaper articles, going online and looking at how people dressed, some pictures from um, the various plantations and small towns, just to get a feel and a look for what the scenery should be, even down to what were postal workers wearing in, in that day and time. I had to also do a lot of research around coal mining looking at pictures, looking at who was there reading articles um, written years back um, on the history of coal mining and the conditions. So it did take a lot of research, but again, the nucleus of it came from family stories. And I'm sure, you know, in many families, stories are told down the generations. Mm. So you vividly captured how alcoholism is really a coping mechanism for the hardship of Black life in your book. And the repeated raping of Tuttle's wife, Betsy, the eventual lynching of Daddy Tuttle and the lives of their children with a focus in a story on Dub or Dublin and Tim. Now, as you wrote this piece, you did this research, you started writing this piece, what emotion was it evoking in you? How were you feeling? Was it cathartic? Was it angering? How did you feel as you were putting this to paper? Yes, it wasn't necessarily cathartic because there was no real feeling of relief, but it was with sadness. Mm. It was sadness to know that 
my ancestors had to go through that type of suffering um, to allow me to have the freedom in my life today. And uh, so it's just very sad. Um, what I really hope is that, um, you know, at some point in, in our existence as humans, we stop looking for superiority and dominance um, as an inherent thing that we desire because it comes at the suffering of someone else. So, you know, there's sadness, there's frustration that some of those conditions still exist in various places around the world. People are still enduring that type of treatment. So I'm just very sad that that's a part of human existence. It shouldn't be, it, but it has for centuries, <laughs> for many, many years. Um, and I'm sure it'll still exist, um, you know, in, in several generations down the line, because it's just a to me, it's an inherent thing that we as humans need to understand how to control and understand that everybody should be treated the same. Hmm. Okay, so, <laughs> Teresa, you spent most of this book diving into the lives of Dov and Tim. Two very different life outcomes, despite these brothers growing up in the same family. Now, without giving away the story details, because we do want people to read the book, how would you explain the impact of family on the formative and young adult years of a person's outcome when they become an adult? Environment is very important. Um, you know, the environment that a young person uh, exists in, especially their first years of life, uh, is very impressive upon them and impressive upon their future. In my family, education um, and love were prevalent, were the dominant themes of my environment, and so they became a part of who I am as an adult and formed a part of who I am as an adult. That's why those stories that the characters go through greatly sadden me because I was taught to love. I was taught to nurture. I was taught to, um, you know, pursue knowledge and education. And those were the opposite of what those characters go through. Um, but that is what I believe is, you know, the, the environment of the child, uh, visits upon them in the future and you will see that theme within lost seeds all three books that theme will carry through um and the environment that our ancestors existed in is still somewhat carrying through and still carries through to some extent in the black community the remnants of slavery are still here in some facets and it will take some time and that's why it's very saddening that the inherent nature of us as human beings is dominance and superiority and power. And those drive the poor treatment of, of um, you know, minorities and people of color. And it's just not minorities and people of color in other countries. There's, you know, you can see there are groups of people that um, are oppressed. Why do we need that as human beings? So again, that's why, you know, I really, uh, it saddens me that all people are treated um, equally. On that note, Teresa, I'm originally from Jamaica. So the, the experience of slavery was very active there as well. But I will say that while time does heal doesn't mean scars won't exist. And one of the things I have found as a Jamaican transplanted in the United States is Jamaica got, uh, Jamaica had slavery abolished 50 years before America did. And I can tell you the generational difference of time, the experiences and the state of mind that a lot of Jamaicans are in now compared to how I see my peers here in the United States, there is a difference. And I think that another 50 years from now, um, 
the experience that even now, although it's significantly better, will be, I hope, even more so 50 more years from now in America. That's my dream. That's my hope because I'm very much aware of what's going on. So coming back to this, the story's point of view is essential to the focus of the story. Now, a lot of academic history books have white writers. And you tell the story of Lost Seeds in the beginning from the lens as a black writer. Now, as a reader who identifies with Tim, I identify with Tim. I was surprised to see you capture that identity struggle the way you did. Honestly, I'm being very honest. I thought that was spot on. And as a Jamaican, born to mulatto parents myself, who straddle the world of a family composed of both black and white, you know, there was a time I also felt where, you know, unsure where I belong. So, you know, as blacks telling me I would never understand, a white sister-in-law who takes joy in reminding me that I'm not white. So since Lost Seeds, the beginning, is the start of a series of stories yet to come, is there any chance that Tim's journey will be fleshed out a little bit more in the pages to come? Oh, definitely it will. Um, and he does go through a, a struggle with his identity, as you as you read. And in Lost Seeds, The Legacy, which is book two, you will see how that manifests to some extent in the next generation. And in Lost Seeds, The Reconciliation, which is the third book, um, you know, there are some things that will evolve there where, you know, some descendants must uh, make a choice. And sometimes society causes us to make a choice. Who are you? identify with one or the other and it tends to split families up as you so you know eloquently relayed here um so yes in lost seeds uh the book two and book three you will see how that plays out um because it's a constant i shouldn't say constant but it's a continuing theme in some families and more and more as you have multiracial families um, the way society is right now, it it causes people to make a declaration. And in my mind, why? Why do we have to choose? Why can't we just choose to be who we are, meaning us, me as an individual living in this world? So, yes, that will be fleshed out. You will see how Tim evolves around that. I mean, it's very relevant because President Obama, for example, is a very current example where they say he's black. He's not black enough. He's oh, it's just, it's I I'm looking forward to part two and part three of your book. Mm -hmm. So I want to actually read a quote from your book. You said, uh, well, I should say um, Dublin um, said, I'm designing my destiny. And so is Tim. I'm good now. Mm -hmm. Dublin becomes successful as he embraces his place and maximizes the opportunities. He absorbs his race, uh, racist experiences, but he pushes forward. Now, considering that several generations have passed since the historical setting of your book, how do you see America's Black past continuing to influence today's Black experience, or, or does it? It, it absolutely does. And you will see in book two, Lost Seeds, The Legacy, how that past impacts the early 1960s, the next generation. It takes place in the 1960s around the civil rights. So in Lost Seeds, The Legacy, the Dublin and his offspring conflict in how the Black experience is meeting the challenges of the current day. He brings in the way he typically would have dealt with things, um, and but his the next generation has a different way of acting out the Black experience and how to meet the challenges. So each generation, you will see, they deal with it in a different way, which is really uh, indicative of how things are happening today. Oh, so is there anything else you'd like to share, Teresa? Oh, absolutely. I've mentioned briefly the second book. It's called Lost Seeds, The Legacy. 
Um, it is has a little mystery, suspense, and it really shows how Dub and Tim's relationship comes to a climax and how they reconcile their relationship. Um, and then, of course, Lost Seeds, The Reconciliation, the third and last book in the saga, uh, will be coming out in 2025 in the fall. So please look for that. But I will tell you that Lost Seeds, The Legacy um, really takes you on a new journey with Dub and Tim and their offspring. Ah, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Teresa Sebastian is my guest. And listen, this was this is so relevant for right now where we are in life and history. And so share this show with someone because this this is this is hot right now. This this conversation is very, very hot right now. And I definitely want you to go connect with Teresa at Teresa Mosley Sebastian.com. I will put the website in the credits so you get it correctly. You can purchase the book at Amazon or your favorite bookstore. And Teresa, thank you so much for being my guest today. Well, thank you so much, Trudy. Thank you for having me. And I would love to come back when Law Seeds. Uh, reconciliation comes out next year. Well, I hope you're. Sure.